So good morning, everyone here in the Zoom uh, meeting. Glenda from Peru, Luis Bermudez from Ecuador, Beatriz from Bolivia, Marco Antonio from uh, Mexico, Macarena from Peru, and also our good, good friend, Mauricio Arango from Colombia. Thank you so much for being with us. Today is the 7th of November, 2021. Uh, let me share my, my screen, please to let you know what we are doing almost uh, at the end of the year. Uh, okay, the International English Online Meetings started last year between quotes, thanks to the pandemic. Uh, somebody to read this beautiful quote, Marco Antonio, could you help us reading out and telling, telling us <coughs> what you think about it? Right. Every human is like all other humans, some other humans, and no other human. Oh, uh, very Wonderful, interesting. Right, Marco? <laughs> yeah. Wonderful, right? Right. A very, very interesting, uh, well, statement. Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, you were saying, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, I think everything is right about this st statement. Every human is like all other humans. And uh, this is why we can say we are all the same and we uh, all have rights, but also obligations. Yes, so we are um, all the same, but at the same time, we are not all the same. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, no, every human is like no other human because this is the reason we are called individuals yes right? and we are individuals thank you so well, much Ma marco next one please glenda do you think you could help us yeah sure okay so a people without the knowledge of their past story origin and culture is like a tree without roots mm -hmm. yes I like that quote. Yes, and it tells me, well, every country in the world has a uh, story. And, and it's like, I mean, if you don't know where you're from and then, or you don't care where you're from or what, uh, or what your background is, then uh, we are missing. I mean, missing an important part of us. And I think as teachers, I mean, we are English language teachers, uh, we, we shouldn't uh, forget yes. our, our history and maybe try to, uh, all that cultural, I mean, our heritage, uh, we should try to rescue it and put that into our lesson and, and use English as, as a tool also to keep uh, connecting with, with our roots. Yes? Yeah. And then from that point, keep moving moving forward. Thank you so much, dear Glenda. Hello, good morning in Canada, dear Raj. Could you please help us? Thank you for being awake so early in Canada. <laughs> yes, good morning. It's 6.30 a.m. in the morning. I speak, <laughs> to, <laughs> I speak to everyone in the same way, whether he is the garbage man or the president of the university, Albert Einstein. We're treating everybody equally and respectfully. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Well, who is all the videos? Well, you can find them here in the YouTube channel. Uh, who is presenting uh, almost at the end of the year? Well, the, on Sunday, the 21st of November, we have these great two professors from uh, Argentina and Colombia, Rocio Oviedo and Silvina Velasquez. They will be talking about growth mindset for educators. And uh, on Sunday, the 5th of December, very near Christmas, Marina Gonzalez from Argentina will be talking about teaching English to future English teachers, a very, very good, nice topic that I personally like very much. And to finish up our press, uh, international meetings in December, uh, we will have this 65th international English online meeting, the round table, let us be grateful to life. We will have four educators, four professors from different parts of the world who will be uh, reflecting along with us about the good things, the bad things, and et cetera, things of these two years of pandemic. 
Well, today we have our good, good friend, Mauricio Arango. There are many things to say about Mauricio. So let me, let me read a few lines about his life. Mauricio Arango holds a master's in English didactics from the Universidad de Caldas in Manizales, Colombia. Uh, along with being an EFL teacher at various settings such as language centers, high school, universities, and social academic projects. Uh, through his presentations in ELT events, he mainly shares the design, development, and implementation of materials in his classes, as well as strategies used to enhance students' intercultural competence. He's currently a teacher in two projects, Caldas and Bogota bilingual with high school students. So thank you so much, dear, dear Mauricio Arango in Colombia. It's always a pleasure to have you here and thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jaime, and thank you everybody for joining us this morning. And Beatriz, please say hello to Araceli Salas. Uh, I lo I'm looking forward to attending Mexico someday. <laughs> Okay. I promise uh, I will, and I'm going to hug her on your behalf as well. All right. Okay. So thank you. And let's get started like uh, with today's uh, topic and presentation right now. Mm. All right. So uh, my topic today has to, do, has to do with intercultural competence and what are the resources, materials that I have been designing in my, classes, in my classes and how they have been working out with different kind of students, children, adults, high school students, language institute students as well. Uh, everything that I'm gonna share with you today, I'll be sharing this in a folder later and also all the links and the articles. What is the main objective that I have for today? So I'm going to be sharing the, the activity could be digital activity or paper-based activity. Then I have some examples. And after the examples, something that is really important is just to become more aware that everything that we do in class is supported by theory. So all of the activities that are, I'm presenting today to great extent have been done based on some author's research. Uh, so I'm providing you with the articles or the reference that I'm using to support that. Uh, let's get started with this, with our agenda. When we have a class, Professor Pennyor has this wonderful book that is called 100 Teaching Tips. And tip number three says, please provide the students with the plan. What is the activity that you're going to do in the class? because the students want to know what the class is going to be all about. So this is the tip that I follow from Professor Penny Orr regarding the use of an agenda. So that is why today we have an agenda as well. Our agenda basically uh, includes the date. So if I have this agenda that is more kind of graphic agenda, I can have students participate and ask, okay, What's today's date? So they can see the calendar and tell me what is today's date, also the time. So guys, because I want my students to have a sense of achievement. So we're gonna start classes or class 9.30 a.m. And I'm going to show every single activity that we are going to be uh, developing in class. In that sense, we know that uh, we, if we accomplish everything or not, so we can continue next class. But this is one way you can use the, the, the agenda with like, like the blackboard that we have been using. Also, this is like more graphic agenda. And at the end, I have at the time. So we are expected to finish at 11 a.m. In that, in that case, we avoid students. I mean, the, the question that is really common, teacher, what time does the class finish? Okay, remember in our agenda, I already told you that we're gonna finish at 11 a.m. So this is the first, uh, like I'm gonna say tip uh, taken from Professor Penny Ward that uh, is having an agenda for our classes. Then we have a warm up. Also, I have been doing what I what I have been doing to foster like intercultural communication is adapting some resources that I have been using or I used in my in-person classes. And now I say, how can I use them 
like for my virtual classes. And then when I'm going back next year to in-person classes, I will take my boxes with me my, again. So this, is, this game is called five second rule. And I say, okay, I like fostering like intercultural competence. How I'm going to use a game that is more like US, US like, let's say I'm gonna say with US topics. These are the cards that I have, but I say how I'm going to do it for my students. So this is the, the idea. In this game, when you have a category, I can say, Jaime, let's gonna have the example. Jaime, please. Okay. Okay, name, okay, please. Teacher. Name three flowers in English, flowers. Sunflower. And that's it. <laughs> I mean, you don't get the point. No, I mean, if this timer I, I lasts, feel, I, five feel so, I, I feel so ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one, this one, Jaime. Jaime, can you please tell me five cities in Peru? Ciclayo, Piura, Lima, Trujillo, Tacna. There were three anyway, sorry. <laughs> okay, but I say, but now how can I do it virtually or online activity? What I Sorry, Mauricio, to... where did you get that beautiful uh, gadget that makes that noise? In the US with the box. <laughs> this, this is called uh, it's called a five second rule game. Okay. <laughs> okay, now, but I say, now we have, this is the activity we're going to do. Uh, let's say, for example, Olenka, hello, Olenka, you're gonna be the student helping me out with this. Okay, Olenka, you're gonna tell me Five and not, not three. Name three Latin American countries in five seconds. Olenka, let's begin. Go now. Peru, Colombia, Argentina. Exactly. Olenka gets the point because look, she, she even she has one second left. When Olenka says the countries, I have this. Okay, Olenka, you said this and this, but Olenka, you know, the class, we have more countries in Latin America, right? So in this case, I can say, by the way, by the way, uh, do you happen to know, I mean, you can ask, what is the capital of Bolivia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Panama? If this is level one, I can ask, Olenka, can you please spell Ecuador? So this is not only advanced classes, I can have students spell the words, right? Oh, yeah, this is an example. I have more categories. Please, seven wonders of the modern world. We're not going to do this ever because it takes time, but just to let you know that with this activity, I can ask, where is Machu Picchu? Where is Peru, Petra? In Peru. <laughs> exactly. In Peru. <laughs> Where is the Taj Mahal? If my level is basic level, maybe with countries. I mean, if they say Peru, if they say India, yeah. if they say Italia, I say, no, Italy. I mean, this is the way that we are also fostering the names of the countries in English. And more, you can go beyond that. Now we have national parks of Colombia because we don't know what are the national parks in Colombia. So let's see. Tairona, Los Nevados, Chingaza, Los Flamencos, Sibiriquete. Okay, this is a, the warm up. Pan Panama, Panamanian provincias. Let's see that I'm teaching in Panama. Panama has 10 provinces. And I'm gonna ask my students, all oh, right, what are they? Tell me three Panam Panamanian provinces. Oh, Boca del Toro, Chiriquí, Darien, Penonome, Veraguas. We can see the map, okay? We can also use the map uh, to see what can you, I mean, what students can see there with a bigger map, of course. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Ocean, the Panama Canal. Now, Latin American currencies. Here, I'm gonna ask, and students are, okay, I'm gonna give you like, Olenka, this is also for you, Olenka. Can you please tell me three Latin American currencies in less than five seconds? Let's start now. Soles, Argentinian Soles, and... I don't know. You made it. You made it. Okay. By the way, if you happen to have some realia, you can say, okay, guys, by the way, this is a quetzal. Where is the quetzal? I mean, where can you use the quetzal? Oh, in Nicaragua. No, in Panama. Okay, guys, no, it's in Guatemala. By the way, what's the capital of Guatemala? I have, I mean, I have a beautiful, I want to say beautiful current uh, bill that is from Singapore. So I can ask, guys, do you know anything about Singapore? These are two Singaporean Singapore dollars. So I can ask how much, what is the, I mean, uh, how much, I mean, how many dollars, like US dollars or Colombian pesos are two Singa Singaporean 
dollars, uh, yeah, dollars. So uh, this is the way that uh, we can use also realia. I don't know how much is that, could be a lot of money, couldn't be a lot of money, but uh, this is why we can use realia. And look, this PowerPoint can last one minute or a whole class, it's up to you, it's up to you. And what we are doing, if we are doing this aligned to our curriculum, it's perfect because the students are practicing a lot of things, simple present, simple past, can you, I mean, all the grammar topics or contents or vocabulary that we are expected to teach in our classes. Uh, we have COP, what is COP? I can tell guys, my students, okay, COP is Colombian pesos. Well, so when you're going online and you see COP, that means that at that pair of shoes, are the, 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 the price is in, in, in Colombian pesos. We have flowers, Jaime, look, this is this was yours. <laughs> the flowers one. <laughs> you know what, so, Mauricio, you know what? I love what you do because we teachers understand that the students feel afraid, nervous, just like we do. So it, yes. it helps us, it helps us to remind us that we are we are uh, treating human beings. So we must be patient. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, yeah, yeah. Example here with flowers, we can use, uh, I can connect this activity with my very own city, Medellin, because we have a wonderful, awesome flower festival in August. So this is the way I said, oh, guys, by the way, in Colombia, Medellin, we have the flower festival in August. And we have European capital cities. If we want to go beyond and say, let's, let's explore Europe in case we have to we want to do it. And here is the opposite. Helsinki is the capital of Finland. Oslo is the capital of Norway. By the way, how do you spell Norway? So here we can also, believe it or not, we are practicing something like writing mechanics. Why? Because guys remember that the countries are with capital letters. Make sure that, so this is the way that we also, to some extent, we are like uh, covering several, several skills, integrated skills. And number three, we can have this, okay. We can personalize our warm-ups. If I knew who were here before, I say, okay, three participants, Jaime, Juan, Maria, Selmira. So this is the way that you can also use these warm-ups for using your students' names. So this was the warm-up, remember, taken from this game. So it's possible, it's possible to have a board game and like translate, like, like transform this uh, uh, board game into, uh, PowerPoint. Now, we don't have enough time to go and see and read more like the articles, but uh, always that we do things in class. I mean, we don't have enough time also in classes to say, oh, I'm doing an agenda. This is because this professor said that I'm doing this game because we don't have that time. But uh, it's just to let you know, you know that, that every single thing we do in class is supported by theory. In this case, I took two articles, the one from a professor from Vietnam, Tran Yugen, uh, she wrote a great article about intercultural com competence in ESL, EFL classes. And also there is one that is also classic because I have some students in the master's program and they only want to have 20, 20 articles, 20, 22 articles. No, 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 no. There are some classic articles that we can use in our field. Just to let you know that I don't know why some students just want to have 2020 articles. So this is that from professor from the US, Deardorff, 2006. And he has like, and also, also another article. And I took two important, th important things from those articles. Number one, from the professor Yuen from Vietnam, she proposed like a framework to teach intercultural, or to foster intercultural co competence in our classes. She says, let's begin with cultural knowledge, cultural knowledge. I mean, in our cities, our, our countries, more local knowledge. Then let's go to the cultural awareness when students are going to compare their culture with other cultures in Latin America, for example, maybe in Europe. And cultural competence is when students have those tools just to think more critically Critically, critically about other cultures. So, but I want to show you more specifically what she says. So she said, in cultural knowledge, what we're we going to do? Let's promote, let's talk about people, customs, habits, folklore, products. What is the product? Example, if I say, today we're gonna talk about this. What is this in Colombia? This is costal. What is a costal? Okay, actually this is where 
uh, coffee is packed and sent to other countries. So this is a product that we have in Colombia. And I'm like enhancing students like cultural competence by letting them know or just uh, reviewing what is this. Then cultural awareness, they say, okay, we're going to compare this Let's see in Peru, do you have this in Peru? In Honduras, that Honduras is also a coffee country. Do they have the same kind of bags? So this is the way that uh, we are uh, like bearing in mind, taking into account some theories, some articles that some professors all over the world have like written. And we are just applying this to our, in our classes. Uh, the, other, the other article just says, okay, in the cultural competence is the ability to develop what? Knowledge skills and attitudes. Uh, as I told you before, I'm gonna share with you those articles, but uh, why I'm sharing this with you? Because all the activities that uh, you are going to be exploring today are based on those like articles or on theory. Uh, when it comes to re uh, resources, you know, there are some uh, good articles as well about resources. Oh, uh, here I can show you Right now, let me see uh, some of, so I just wanna double, double check that uh, you are going to have access to those articles in case you want to read them and use it for your masters, for your undergraduate students to assign to your classes. So these are the articles that uh, I will be sharing with you as well when we finish. Uh, when it comes to resources, you know, we have like auditory materials and also print digital materials. In this case, what I use in my, my classes is uh, some also some realia. Example, maps, maps. I know that everything, you can find everything, let's say digitally, digitally nowadays, but I still like to have paper things and things that I can touch. So this is like some postcards. If we're working on Asian culture, we have some Japanese postcards and I have like maps. I have something about Chiclayo, Peru, right? We can find out more info about Chiclayo, Peru. And also I can ask, I can have this activity. Okay, this is also a warm up. I say, okay, students, you're going to look at my brochure. This is the, the Art Walters Museum. Based on the picture, where do you think it is? Oh, teacher is stuffed. The students are going to complain. No, it's impossible. No, but I, we, I'm not going to tell you, oh, this museum is in the US, in Europe. No, just tell countries, cities, where do you think it is? And maybe after one, three minutes, five minutes, when everybody's, ah, no, I don't, we don't like this class because the teacher make us think about this. No, yes, no, no, no. Okay, by the way, guys, this beautiful museum is in Baltimore in the US. So when I can share the, the link, I can share this, but I, I can use this like Realia, these resources to have students think, produce. I mean, yeah, students need to communicate. Why I don't ask questions about that brochure before uh, starting the class. May I say something, Mauricio? Sure, I, I, yeah. I, 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 after two years in front of the computer, I've just realized that the, the realia is so important because I, it's different if you show the slide and if you show the realia, I feel much more motivated. And, the, and I have a question. Do you really spend three, five minutes waiting for the students to find the answer? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I mean, what do you mean? Waiting? Uh, oh, no. I didn't get it. I mean, what do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, waiting no, or... you, you said you said you said that you don't care if it takes three or, or five minutes for the students to find out, for example, where that museum is. Oh, OK, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is that in those two, three minutes, the students are going to say Spain, Japan. I mean, it's not that they're going to be quiet. No, no, no. They need to say some countries and maybe in three minutes I'm going to say, no, guys, this is the answer. But uh, it's not that they're gonna be quiet for three minutes. No, I say, okay, tell me. Okay, tell me okay, where. okay. And, and I'm gonna give clues. Okay, it's, it's in America, it's in Asia. But uh, yeah, after three minutes, I'm gonna say yes, right? Okay, I All have right. some, uh, well, speaking of realia, I love using, for example, flags. Hi, me, you know? Oh, everybody, flags. This is the flag. I say Spain, Colombia, the US, <laughs> Argentina. And I can have, I mean, my topic is, Comparisons, As students are going to compare things. Exactly. In the book, they say rabbits are faster than turtles. Yeah, we know that.
But uh, how often do we say that sentence in Spanish or in English? Hey, hi, mate. Good morning. Hi, mate. You know, rabbits are, are more are faster than turtles. I may say, oh my goodness, Mauricio I didn't know. Okay, what about <laughs> if we have students compare flags? Okay, this is the flag from where? Spain, Colombia. What about the colors, the shape? So this is another, and maybe could be more meaningful than rabbits are faster than turtles, I guess. So, but unless, <laughs> unless Mauricio, sorry to interrupt again. I'm so sorry. I'm very. No, oh, that's okay. I'm this very, is no, that, mean that this gives morning. me time to drink water. And to get... <laughs> <laughs> unless you are comparing turtles from Ecuador, from Galapagos, and turtles from El Nuro in Pura, Peru. <laughs> that would be intercultural. <laughs> yes, Jaime. So you are those, you are kind the, these kind of students who say, teacher, but look. So and then next time I'm gonna say, yeah, I will I will have another example. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, go, go so, Mauricio, sorry. No, Jaime, that's okay. Look, when it comes to dates, the date, today, Sunday, November 7th, let's explore what is happening today in the world. They say this is the day. 311, there are 54 days left. You know what? No many students, when they are basic and even intermediate, they know what is 14 days left. What is that? We know that. But many students, they don't know. They maybe, sometimes, sometimes they say, teacher, this has to do with the left hand. I say, no, 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 this is an expression to say. So I can give more examples. For example, it happened last week. Okay, I say, guys, there are three weeks left to finish this, the school year in Colombia. I use that sentence. So it's like a sentence that we can use um, like with these kind of examples. And here today, you know, uh, this is the calendar. You can use the calendar. And uh, there is a link, a link here in which you're gonna find the calendars and what is happening every single day, every single day. And today, you know, what's happening in Europe, in the US, they are changing their clocks. Why? Because it's daily saving time, right? So what we're going to do is daylight saving time. I'm saying, even if the class is tomorrow, I mean, because we don't have classes on Sunday, actually, but we're more gonna say, what happened yesterday? Maybe my students, they say, teacher, I don't know, we don't know. All right, guys, I wanna show you something. What is a teacher? I wanna show what happened in the state. So I'm gonna use a resource that is authentic. It's a newspaper from Rhode Island, in Providence, Providence, Rhode Island. So here in this newspaper, there is a, it's Providence, Providence, the Providence Journal. Here, there is a short, short video. That's that, let me see. There is no sound, Mauricio. Oh, let me see. Oh, so, yeah, but I. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it was music. Anyway, thank you, Jaime, for about this. Song. Like and that. here, uh, what you, we can do with the video is like I have my students. I say, guys, we're gonna watch the video again. Since nobody's speaking in the video, I'm going to select. I say. Beatriz, Macarena, Luis, do me a favor, please. Can you please uh, read what you see in the video? So this is another exercise that the students can practice. They can practice speaking by reading the, what they see in the video. But uh, what I'm showing is that how can we connect what is happening every day? We, we live in the tropical area. I mean, we in the zone. So in Peru, in Ecuador, we don't know what it's all about. But why don't students kind of learn what is that all about, right? So this is one way that uh, I try to uh, include what's happening every day and is, of course, connected to the cultural, intercultural competence. And here, okay, I have another good book from, from Professor Penny Orr. I love her. And this is the book where I took the following activity. 
It's not that I say, oh, Mauricio, oh, Mauricio, you just have those brilliant ideas by yourself. No, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes not. But uh, in this case, I want to show you what is that. She says, okay, why don't you have a ranking activity? Professor, or, I mean, she doesn't say, yeah, it's for, it's to enhance intercultural communication in Colombia. No, no, no. You know that the activities are in general the same in this case. I can say, Olenka, this, is a, this activity is the one that I'm proposing. Maybe Olenka is going to say, I will use it. I will use it the same. I will use it differently. I want to adapt. Oh, Mauricio, I can't use it in my context this year. Maybe next year, yes. So this is the things that you can do with the activity. So when we go to conference, when we go to this kind of event, no, I didn't like professor. No, you learn something from those professors, those presentations. Now, here they have the ranking activity. The ranking activity is pay, paper-based. It worked. I have my students, students complete, they say, number one, what is the celebration I enjoy the most? Christmas, Halloween, birthdays, San Valentine's Day. Uh, let's say, Luis says, number one, number one, I mean, you have to say, tell students that number one is the favorite one, favorite. Number one, Halloween to Christmas, birthday. And then Luis is going to work with Olenka and then they're going to compare. If they, they have the same number one, if they, they have the same number two, three, and four. So, you know, could be advanced uh, intermediate students, but uh, I, this is, uh, let me see in case that uh, you want to do it virtually online. You have this, the same, look, in the same handout, but in PowerPoint. And I can say, guys, everybody, in a minute, so start watch, think which is the which I mean the celebration that you enjoy the most is. So and then Jaime is gonna say, oh teacher, number one birthday two, and I can say Jaime why, and so on. So I can ask and Jaime please compare with Raj, what is the your favorite one? So I'm doing this paper base and also with PowerPoint. This is the same handout but transformed into PowerPoint. The landmark I would like to visit, Eiffel Tower, Machu Picchu, Taj Mahal. Here, if I have super advanced students, they say, oh, I am super advanced teacher. I'm not learning nothing. I mean, anything in this class. I say, okay, by the way, what landmark is in your bucket list? For sure, some of you students say, teacher, what is that? So this is a way that you can have your classes from basic, intermediate, advanced. If we know, we know maybe what bucket list is. But I will have to think in the students, do they know what, what, what it is? So in this case, we are having a more advanced class in case you want to have a more advanced class. So here we have more examples with flags. As I told you before, flags, you can compare flags and the colors and the shapes and so on. What, is the, what are the similarities between Japanese flag and Portugal, Portuguese, uh, no, not Portuguese. This is Brazil, it's Brazil flag, Brazilian flag. So if a student say, oh, teacher, Japanese flag ha, has, they made a mistake, has half a red circle. God, you know, students are really advancing in the process because they say red circle. Don't think that, oh, no, no, no. I mean, please give me more info. What is the, what, what is the measure of this? No, no, no. No, if students are saying red circle in Brazilian one has like a blue circle, circle, your students are advancing. Now, the Colombian food, I like the most. Ajiaco, and they have paisa, tamal, arepa de huevo. Glenda, which one do you want when you come back to Colombia? <laughs> arepa de huevo in Cartagena, Glenda, you tried it? Don't remember? And Olenka, yes, Olenka yes. was in Cartagena. <laughs> okay. I prefer the arepa paisa. Ah, and I didn't have it. <laughs> um, ah, you know, but if you want to have bandeja, bandeja paisa, your stomach must be ready for this super heavy dish. <laughs> Anyways, so now uh, we're going to talk about, I mean, I told you about the cultural knowledge. What is it all about? They say we need to know about people in Colombia, in Peru, in Argentina, customs, habits, folklore, cultural products, literature, and arts. So we're talking about food in, in the in the like in the ranking. And we say, okay, Professor Gur says the ranking activity is a good activity. But I look what we can do. Expand, expand this activity to our context. Now I say, 
Oh, Mauricio, you said something about Christmas, Thanksgiving, and so on. What about Colombia? Okay, it's gonna talk about Colombia. What is the celebration you like the most? Carnaval de Barranquilla. No, it's Feria Las Flores, I made a mistake. Dia del Amor y la Amistad, Feria Manizales, and we are doing the ranking activity, but more contextualized to Colombia. No. When we are doing something like anything, something like, let's say, an activity like ranking, with pictures, with anything we do in class, if we are aligned, if we are aligned to our curriculums in Colombia, in Venezuela, in Panama, we are safe. In Colombia, we have actually the this Colombia bilingue English kit. In this kit, we find the functions, the objectives of our classes. I mean, it's really complete. And there are some posters in which we're gonna see what we are supposed to teach in our classes. For example, there is an activity about Carnaval de Barranquilla. That is why when I'm talking about Carnaval de Barranquilla in my classes, I am connected. I am aligned to what the Ministry of Education in Bogota says we are supposed to do in Colombia. Oh, that I have only one hour? No, don't complain. If you have only an hour, that's okay. What can you do about it? If you have 10 hours, that's okay. But so we need to sometimes accept that number of hours. Here is the example. We're going to do an activity about Carnaval de Barranquilla. So this is another activity that maybe in February, before that, that is the Carnaval de Barranquilla, I'm going to plant an activity about that great event in Barranquilla in the coast. But now, what else can I do? Okay, this is an activity that I'm going to do. Guys, you know, yesterday, you are missed my students. Yesterday I went shopping, right? And I got five products. Oh, what, what, do, you, what do you get? You know, it's quite, tough, challenging for me to translate this into English. How do you say Arequipa in English? I don't know. It's like when you say, how do you say Buñuelo? A student A say, teacher, the, the, I had a professor last year and he said that Buñuelo is, I don't know, the other student teacher, I had a teacher and he said, I mean, Buñuelo for me is Buñuelo, but if you want to translate it, that's okay. I have Arequipe, I have Platano Maduro chips, I have Latina Blanca. <laughs> I went shopping, but Colombian. I mean, I feel, you know, you can say, oh, Maurice is the most Colombian teacher I have ever <laughs> only buying no, Colombian. I, 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 would, I would say Mauricio is the richest teacher I've <laughs> ever known. You oh, got, no. You've got lots of money to buy so many things, Mauricio. No, you want to see the, the exchange currencies and, oh, no, Mauricio, no. That's right. Okay. And here we have some Chocolatinas yet. What is your job, guys? What is your job? Even now. You are going, to, we are like, in our class, we are learning the numbers and we are learning like comparison, superlatives, so everything. Now, your job is in five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you are going to tell me which one is the most expensive product. Product, Of course, remember, when we have some students, they're going to complain, complain. Teacher is tough, it's difficult, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, anyway, so we have to manage that. Anyway, so, but I hear, we're gonna say, oh, what is that? Oh, by the way, uh, this is a great, this is a great, uh, speaking of Chocolatina Jet, the one in the middle, we have like an album. It's a classic gift for kids, for everybody. In this album, when you open the Chocolatina, the candy bar, you're gonna find a small pictures. This is Montserrat de Bogota. And you just open this and paste it in your album. And you have to complete it, uh, I mean, in a year, two years. And now that is also why I think this, I mean, this album is $1. It's $1. It's not that it's expensive. And the Chocolatinas are maybe, I don't know, 20 cents, something like that. And what you're going to do is complete the album. But what is the album all about? As I told you, but it's divided by into regions. They say, Orinoquia, Amazonia, Caribe, Andina, Pacifica, and kids enjoy and they learn about this. For example, this is El Delfín Rosado. Yeah? So this is one thing that uh, we can use. But now let's go and do the activity. And then we're gonna say, I wanna tell you guys, look, now yesterday on Friday, 
Colombian peso is 3,870, uh, one dollar is 3,780, And then I have a students. Okay, please tell me which one was the most expensive. Who can tell me for you which one was the most expensive? Anyone, let's see. The bocadillo, this, this. Jaime, what do you think? The bocadillo, maybe, teacher? <laughs> <laughs> With milk. Oh. Okay, I say, Jaime, yes, no. But uh, I can show you the real prices, you know, and say, you can Chocolate. compare. I mean, the, this could be even less than $2. You can say, oh, it's cheap or it's expensive compared to Peru, to, uh, to Panama, to Guatemala, Bolivia. So. And here I can say, okay, who has everything the same? And we're gonna practice numbers as well. And I have actually, okay, guys, look, this is the receipt. In case the teacher, no, you're lying. No, I'm not lying. Look, this is the receipt. So this is an idea that you can see and what I'm doing. Maybe even in my classes, there are some students that they don't know that product because they only like other kind of food or if my class is in the whole country, like what is happening now with the students from Bogota, from Caldas, maybe I can ask, guys, how do you call this in Bogota? In Medellin, we call it bocadillo. In Bogota, for sure, they can have another name for that. So I'm, I'm fostering intercultural or cultural, uh, cultural like uh, competence locally, I mean, in the, in the country, now in Colombia. If I happen to have a class in, in Panama, for example, oh, it's gonna be even better. So this is the ranking activity and you can see how based on professor course or like uh, advice or tip, we can have one, our very own ranking activity for Colombia, for Peru. Dear Mauricio, can you give us one minute so you can have time yes. to drink some water and eat some bocadillo? <laughs> we, we are so, so motivated and excited with so much information. Anyone who wants to make a comment or say something? Uh, very quickly, please. Anyone? Tito in Ecuador? Yeah, very creative in the way that you use realia, especially as you said, uh, as Mauricio said, the use of uh, things, authentic uh, things. And when it comes to uh, culture issues uh, within the currency and the prices that you find locally, I mean, yeah. if you have a students from other places, I mean, they can enrich themselves by getting to know how money things go in different uh, countries. Yeah, thank you so much, Great Tito. Any, anyone else, please? We have a few more seconds. Anybody who wants to express his or her opinion or make a comment? Mauricio is eating the reality. Olenka, Olenka. <laughs> I'm uh, something that I really love uh, related to Mauricio workshops is that he uses a lot of realia. This is something that I use with my students. For example, sometimes I use the Echo Doc, so I compare the Google Voice type with the Echo Doc. Or sometimes when I use like this, no, the matrix cube, my matrix cube with artificial intelligence. So this is a good way. And but it's very important that you have everything like in your bookshop, okay? So when we compare like in Argentina that I have here, the different places, so I use quite the same. And I consider that if we combine online with Realia, the students are more motivated. So, Thank you so much, Olenka. Anybody else? Before we go back to Mauricio, mm -hmm. anyone else? Nope. All right. Okay, go Thank on, you, Mauricio. Thank you, Thank you so much for your comments. Now, uh, speaking of TISOL, I am TISOL member. I have been TISOL member for like 10, 12, 12 years, and I am part of the intercultural communication intersection. By the way, last Friday, I got an excellent email from one of the members that I want to share with you. What is it all about? If you say, if you say, Mauricio, I want to have updated books about your topic or this topic, I want to give you, you're going to have this PowerPoint. Remember, you're going to have this PowerPoint. And I'm going to give you, I adapted this, uh, these uh, like resources from that email. So I have books like 2020, Introducing Language in Intercultural Communication. I mean, there are like 12 brand new books that are, if you are interested in the topic, if you are completing your master's, your PhD in this kind of topic, that will be really useful for you. So I just want to let you know 
how we can use classic resources or research, and now how can you use more like updated books. So here, there are some interesting 2018, 2020, and actually even there is one that is coming up 2022. It's called Intercultural Communication in Context. So if you have an activity like the one, I say, okay, uh, I'm gonna use again the Latinas. For sure, in one of those books, they're gonna say, yeah, use these products. But as somebody, some research is gonna say, if you use this and this, the intercultural communication, something like that. So in that way, when we are doing research or we, we need to support our everyday classroom procedures, we are doing well because we are doing everything or almost everything based on authors research in this kind of thing. So this is what I wanna share with you as well. Some uh, books that are, even they aren't available yet. Uh, now, the next activity, I always have this activity. It's like a warm up before what we're going to do next. Here, the students are going to find out what is the name of the topic that we're going to, it's like a Hagman, but it's a space Hagman, something like that. So here, let me know what we are going to talk about later, next, in this in the next, next activity. Honduras, right? Honduras. Okay. Yeah. Olenka, Olenka and Glenda, yeah. maybe they have good memories about Helta Tizol in Honduras back in 2018. Olenka is like, yes, <laughs> all right. So here, we're gonna talk about Honduras. Wow. Okay, you can explore Honduras in this website, but we're going to have like a picture comparison activity. What is that all about? Tito is a student A, Glenda, student B, Jaime, student A, Olenka, student B. You have nine pictures about Honduras, but each one has a difference. So Tito's gonna say, Tito say, hey, Glenda, Picture number one says Honduras. Glenda says, oh, Tito, picture number one, it might be handout has Honduras. What's going on? I mean, what's the difference? Believe it or not, look at the difference. Who, who, who can tell me the difference between Honduras one and Honduras two? Colors. Exactly, Tito, which one? Uh, well, on picture number one, uh, N is in yellow in... B, picture B, it's in purple? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> in this case, you have to tell, guys, be patient because it's not that easy, but uh, there is, there's a difference. Now, what about in this? A student would say, oh, I have the flag of Honduras. And Olenka said the flag, teacher, I don't see a difference. I don't like it. This, I don't like this activity. I say, guys, calm down, calm down. Okay, and then what is the difference? The shape, it's a heart, it's a circle, and you know, this is, uh, and now what, what, what uh, virtually I haven't done like that much, but uh, at least it was a paper-based activity that I had, sorry, that has worked out in my classes. You know, uh, here, you, what can you include? Uh, speaking of culture, the map, the food, Nakatamal in Honduras, the flag, the currency, the weather in San Pedro Sula today, the dance, the yeah, the brand. I mean, the any anything you can include. At the beginning, it takes time. Oh, Maurice, I don't have time to change the map and make the difference. But uh, then you can use it not only with the class you have this week, but maybe in the future with the class you will be assigned next next semester. And what we are doing? Look, colors. Tito just talk about color. Colors is supposed to be for basic students, but no, we need to practice colors in even in advanced classes. So it's this activity that is called uh, uh, picture differences, just to give you the idea, how can you do it with two? Yes, you know that uh, if you can print it, this out in colors, that's okay. But you know, in the future, what we can do is laminate those, big, those, those big pieces of papers. If you laminate them, they're going to last forever in case you want to do so. Uh, there is another activity. In this case, I'm taking, like, basing this activity on, you know, what is ACTF, American Council of Teaching of Foreign Language in the, in the US? And they say, 
our students, when they're learning Spanish, Portuguese, they need to know about the cultural framework that is called three Ps, perspectives, protos, and practices. And I say, how can I adapt it to Mexico, to Colombia? So you can read more about it and then say, it's interesting because I say, the practices is how, example, a celebration, how the day of the day is celebrated, observed. Products, what are the products? You know, the sugar skulls, the kind of the altares, and why? Why do they do in Mexico? This is a good project, even task for a week, for a month. And at the end, Luis is going to present with Beatriz about the city, a celebration in Bolivia, in Ecuador. I want to show you an example. This is an example from Feria de las Flores in Medellín. A group of students, they create this poster that you can see there. So this poster is, okay, they say, teacher, how? We have a silleta making, silleta parade, flower growing. What are the products? The silleta, the silletera museum. We have a silletero museum in Santa Elena, close to Medellin. What are the perspectives? Why do they do that? They do the Feria de las Flores. Oh, it's a family tradition. They, they practice the cooperation, right? And also they are proud of the Feria de las Flores. So this is, imagine, it, has, it is a task, even a project for a month, two months, and the final product is gonna be really uh, meaningful for the students. I have an example about piñatas. Who knows? I mean, who knows about piñatas? Maybe we don't know, but they say, why people use piñatas, it was in Mexico first, now we use piñatas in different places, when, how, how it is used and what is, why people use piñatas. So it's an activity that think about it, how can you adapt it into your context and use it with your festivities in Pura, yeah? in Lima, in Santiago de Chile, in Madrid, Spain, in Granada. So this is an activity and it's supported, as I told you before, by the ACFTL, like uh, in the, this is the, the, like the standards that many schools in the US uh, follow, right. Let's move on with an activity that uh, is called what came first. This activity, I had the idea from Google. This is a Google game and I said, ah, how can I do it for my classes? What came first? What I did, was this, this is the product, the final product. Uh, I have, okay, this is basically the, the template. What came first? What year was it opening? Opened, Louvre Museum or Museo El Prado? As students are gonna say, they have to say a year. So we are practicing 1975, 2001. And also I can ask where the Museo El Prado is. Oh, it's in Madrid. Is in, oh, teacher, we don't know. Okay, I'm gonna give you a clue. It's in Spain. It's in the capital of Spain. I'm not gonna say Spain, no, hey, Madrid. I can give some clues, starting for Europe, Spain, Madrid. I mean, going, going in that way, students are practicing what? Listening and learning a lot about these places. So here we have the year. Some of them are gonna be surprised, some not. And I have many things about Colombia, you know? Cartagena San Agustin Archaeological Park at World Heritage Sites. When they were declared? 1984. Have you been to Cartagena? No, yes. Have you been? I'm not going to say, guys, listen to present perfect question. No, 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 no. We're going to say, have you ever been? And we are practicing that present perfect question. We have branch and baby shower. Here is cultural because now in Medellin, baby showers are more and more common and they have changed. In the past was only for girls, for women. Now everybody's involved in the baby shower. So it's something cultural. What is that all about? What is brunch? What is brunch? Maybe in the US now, many people are having brunch. In Medellin, no many people because it's no part of our culture. So that is why I'm going to compare. In this activity, I can have, I'm gonna share it with you. You can see more examples, more and more about this activity, I include arts also. Also, Gabriel Garcia Marquez uh, novels here. Which one was first? Amor en el tiempo del cólera, crónica de una muerte anunciada. Which one? So this is uh, what came first that uh, you can adapt it to 
And this is mixed because it was for the purpose of this presentation. But when I have like a class, I just select one specific topic for that, uh, for this uh, activity. Let's move on with uh, this one. Oh, I found an excellent article, 2020, by a professor from Chile, Flor Toledo Sandoval. And you know what happened? When I was in a project in Manizales, I designed, I designed a unit for my classes. It was individualized. It wasn't part of the program or the contract that I have. I say, all right, I'm going to create a unit specifically for these kids in, in Manizales, right? So I create the unit. I personalize it. Who took the pictures? As students, I didn't do the, I didn't take the pictures. The students took the picture of the park in Rio Sucio Supia, in Rio Sucio Caldas. They completed, I mean, I, I was in charge of I mean, organizing the things, the, 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 the structure of the, of, the, of the unit. And why I'm showing this? Because this is really local unit with pictures from their very own towns. And we are practicing there is and there are. What I did, you can see here, Alejandro. What I did with Alejandro, I said, Alejo, let's go to do something. Teacher, what? Let's go to do this. And Alejandro just, uh, I wanna show you, let me see. Alejandro recorded his voice and it was, it was part of the unit. Hello. My name is Alejandro Choa. I am from Pacora Caldas. The park in Pacora is beautiful. In this park, there is a big church, Nuestra Señora de Chiquinquira, and there is a small cafeteria too. There are several street lamps and comfortable benches. There is a nobleas cellar, and I go there all. Okay, this is the example, how can you involve your students? Oh, what about Mauricio if Alejandro made a mistake? You know, it needs practice. And it's not that uh, it's the first recording. Alejandro says, oh, teacher, we can do it again. But uh, students are listening to their classmates. And I don't think they find easily things about Pacora in any other book. But what happened and why I'm showing this? Even though it was three years ago, this article, wasn't published yet because it's 2020. I said, oh my goodness, I did something. Well, why? Because I can see that Professor Toledo Sandoval is saying this, Loc localization is the modification of a textbook to specifically reflect the local issues and context. It is an action undertaken by educators who seek to change a course book to recognize the need of contextual relevance. What I'm saying is, oh, she, made, she referenced, she, made, she, she cited some authors. And I'm saying, oh my goodness, that unit, now I can show it again. I can use it again. But it now it's stronger because I see that it is more supported than in theory that it was before. So that is why I told you, even though we don't believe in that, everything we do has to do with theoretical frameworks or things or backgrounds. So this is the one unit that I created. And now, uh, this is another topic that I, I really want to uh, focus on, that is localization. Analogies, all right, we have this activity about analogies. Analogies are really, really good for many things. I say many things in general, but yeah. Uh, analogies, you wanna see this, how analogies could be like, a, let's say, a, Warm up in the middle of the class, a whole class would be about analogies. Get ready for analogy number one. Okay, here, if you want to know more about analogies, why analogies are good or bad, they, they, this is the theory. Medellin is to Antioquia as Kido is to, this is an analogy. Medellin is my city, Antioquia is the state. Kido is a city, what is the state? Chocó, right? Now, El Colón is to Costa Rica, as real is to, tell me, who can tell me the answer? Real is to, if you mm. go to Brazil, yeah. Brazil? Brazil, exactly. And here, remember, I can ask, oh, by the way, guys, uh, what's the capital of Brazil? Brazil. 
Rio, Sao, Rio, Sao Paulo. No, you know, Brasilia. Here and how. Okay, not only about culture, but I, I want to show you some ex other examples about how can you use uh, analogies. The original game was this one. I play with my students on the table, on the floor, and I say, no, okay, how can we do it here? Finger is to hand, a pedal is to? Flower. Flower. Right, what about me? Quarter is to 25, we're talking about US dollar. Quarter is to 25 as nickel is to? Dime. Five, the number, five. Quarter is 25 and nickel is five. Oh, I wanna show you one more here. Cow is to move as bird is to? Cheer, yeah. Poland is to Euro as Chad is to? What continent is Chad Africa. in? Africa. Africa, yes. And if you don't know anything about Chad, what you can do is have an extra slide and show where it's located. Where is Chad located? Look, I'm using a passive voice. Where is it located? Uh, okay, I'm using, where is it? In the north, in the south, uh, how big it is, what's the capital that I don't know how to pronounce it. So this is an, an example. How can you expand, expand this? You can also use in mathematics. Three is to triangle as five is to pentagon. This is something that I, you might know, but I, Needless to say, I want to tell you something. When you prepare these activities, I encourage you to use vocabulary that maybe you don't know. I mean, maybe you know it, but I, I'm saying that. Why? Because this is the way that I also we teachers improve our vocabulary. When you say, example, I'm gonna use the word mapache, raccoon. Maybe I didn't know it, but if I use raccoon, skunk in these activities, my my vocabulary as a teacher is going to improve as well. So this is the activity that Lima is to Peru as Bogota is to Colombia, Paso is to Nariño as Cincelejo is to Sucre. An extra activity that I do is assign students this activity and they, they create this activity also and they share the activity with the classmates and they're gonna say, teacher, I have this uh, uh, analogies and they share the analogies with their friends. Right, uh, let me move on with these analogies. Uh, okay, I wanna share with you also this wonderful website that uh, you will be exploring later. This is a storyline online, storyline online. What is this, what is it all about? A storyline online is a great site with books and the books are read by some famous people, some famous people. For example, here we have this book. It is called Catching the Moon, Catching the Moon. You know, Kevin Costner, a famous actor from the States, he reads the book with a little girl. They read the book. Welcome to the Storyline Online brought to you by the SAG Foundation. I'm and Kevin Costner and this is school as much as she thinks on baseball. She wants to be a ball player when she grows up, Mama said with a sad chuckle. I just want her to be happy. This is an example. She'll be whatever. I have another example with the super famous Oprah Winfrey and she reads this book that is called The Hula Hooping Queen. You might, you can, you're suspecting that it has a lot of cultural content because it was the first lady that played like a baseball in the US and let's see what can we find about it. What kind of motivating story. Here it is, remember I told you. Uh... Welcome to Storyline Online brought to you by the SAG-AFTRA Foundation. As still as water in a puddle, she gives me her look and then she hands me a broom. All right, what is good about it? Say, oh, you know, look, get ready for the best news ever. A all books have teacher's guide. So it's like 20 page document with all activities that uh, you can do with those books. Literature, mathematics, uh, arts, all those are ready for us. So we don't need to worry about it because they are designed, designed already 
uh, completed for, for us. Now, uh, I'm going quickly, but let me show you another activity that I do. This Just a reminder, Mauricio, 15 yes. more minutes to go, don't worry. Okay. Ah, 15 more minutes, oh, okay. Oh, so. oh, don't nice. worry, don't worry, take it easy. All right, nice. Uh, here we have, uh, there, is a, there is a book that I'm sharing with you also, it's called Sociology is Understanding and Changing the Social World. Uh, it's online. And when you need some definitions and you want to read more about the things you're doing in class, I found this about artifacts, artifacts because you know in classes, especially the ones we are uh, fostering cultural aspects so in Col for Colombia, for America, Latin America in general, we need to use artifacts so we can have maybe a specific definition about it. But what we are doing with this artifact, look, I have this. I want to ask my students, what they think it is. So in this case, Jaime, what do you think it is? This is, what is this? Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know it. <laughs> I know, I know, because in, in a little town, just 10 minutes away from my city, they sell them. They, okay, I don't what know, is that? I don't know if uh, the, the right uh, translation is like dream catchers. Dream, dream catchers. Catcher. Yeah. Hey, exactly. Hey, 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 yes. So, <laughs> yeah, in case you're a student, I know it's going to take more time, but I, I'm a new it. Jaime can give us, and I can show the picture, what is it all about. But uh, what I'm using is a real artifact, artifact, cultural art artifact that is using in Peru, maybe in, in Colombia. I haven't seen it. I hadn't seen it before. And here, what activity can we have? Okay, guys, we're going to read it. What is that? You know, it is especially like uh, you can use it in your bedroom, the dreams, the good, uh, the good, like they say here, look, they say, according to the legend, the good dreams pass to the center hole to the sleeping person, but the bad dreams are trapped. So what we can do with this, we can do many activities. What do you think about it? Uh, do you like the idea? Do you want to have a, a dream catcher in your house? Why, why not? What do you think about this? Uh, artifact or this uh, object. And then there is a website in which you can find more info about dream catcher legend. What is that all about? So what we can do is create a reading comprehension activity based on that. If you have advanced students, so okay guys, you're going to have this reading and please create five questions that can be answered from that reading. How often do my US students create questions? Not that often in my case. So this is a good chance that I having with my students to create questions about something that they're learning about, the dream catcher uh, artifact. And then if I have time, if I have to work in arts as well with my students, I say, okay, here there are some readings about dream catchers. And also I can say, hey, we are going to create our very own uh, dream catcher if we have time, I mean, you know. And here you say, but the project is in English. Yeah, it has to do with English. Yes, if I say, we need a plate, we need a feather. We are, students are learning the materials in English as well. So this is an idea in case you have a whole unit or a project and at the end, imagine you, students presenting their green catchers, speaking about it, uh, depending on the level, using the structures, the vocabulary that you, they learn in classes and giving ideas, suggestions, uh, students who are in favor, it's gonna have a debate. So imagine everything connected to your curriculum from, the con from, your, from your country, from your city, your town, your school, and so on. So basically it was the dream catcher activity and how it promotes integrated skills, integrated skills in our classes. I have another book that I found last year in a conference. Uh, it was a, a conference not for teachers of English, it was for Spanish, teachers of Spanish and Portuguese. And here they say, translation is good. Oh my goodness, it's gonna, I mean, it's gonna 
affect some classes because many people say, and actually happened to me, I used to work in a, uh, you know, in a language center, if, if the coordinator happened to hear like the word, something in Spanish, they say, oh, maybe you're gonna be fired, believe it or not. So I say, oh my goodness, now I have the book to support why sometimes I can use translation in, in class. So here is a 2021 book from a professor from Arizona. She says, I wanna share the book with you. You can look and see. They say, okay, yes, guys, let's gonna use translation, but in this way, you have a good lesson plan. You have this and this and this. And they say the use of translation, the bottom line is increase cultural awareness and competence. Why? I'm not going to use it if some authors are going to have tried this and they say, yeah, it's good for your IC, the cultural competence. I have an example that is, I mean, this book, the book is not that new. It's 2004 book. It's about Proverbs, you can't imagine, it's 25 pages about Proverbs. I say, oh, thank you, professor. I'm going home and I'm going to use the book finally after 20 years <laughs> now. And here they say, okay, it oh, by the way, I took part in Colombia Bilingual Immersion Programs in Eje Cafetero. And without knowing that about translation and Proverbs, we use those strategies there also in Eje Cafetero. And here, she, the author, provides the lesson plan for you, for me, for Jaime, about Proverbs and say, and say yes, guys, use translation because translating Proverbs is not that easy. And students are going to find lots of details that are working to increase their intercultural competence. For example, here, let's gonna do it. Early birds, what? Silver lining, out of mind, there's fire. What is it? It's the worm. It's the worm. <laughs> yes. Out of sight. Out of mind. <laughs> like it's father. Seen. Like son. Like son. Every cloud has. A silver lining. Yes. <laughs> when there's smoke. There's fire. <laughs> there is fire. There's a, a feather. Drop to that. Now, this is the, now the challenging for everybody is translate those into, let me see, into Spanish. Okay, but now after this activity, what I'm going to do is everybody's going to remind in my class, you have time, they're gonna see. It's not like what we're doing now in one minute, no, it takes more time. But here they say, what is number one? Who can tell me what is number one based on the picture? Early birds gets the worm. Early, exactly, gets catch the worm. Yeah. What is number two? Out of sight, out of mind. Oh, we know. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Here, ah, we need to translate this into Spanish. Let's see the differences. In Colombia, we say maybe el que madruga dios le ayuda. What about in your countries? Do they say it the does, same? That's right. right. That is right. Oh, exactly. In my you country say, we say, say, in my country we say, el que madruga tiene sueño. Oh, <laughs> it's not true, honey. Come on, <laughs> let me, let me, let me. Out of sight, out of mind. How do you say that in your country, in Colombia, we say? In Ecuador, we say that, that is this, what we say, yes. Ojos Ojo que, que no ven, ven corazón que yes. siente. Yes. Exactly. All right. It happens, especially, you know, in love, when you are in love and somebody tells you about, oh, no, no, don't worry. Next. Oh, like father, like son. What is that? Eh, de tal padre, tal astilla, de tal palo, tal astilla. So we are kind of similar. Ecuador and Colombia, we say the same. De tal palo, tal astilla. Yeah. Yes. Next. I think Ecuador, Colombia, Peru, Bolivia is the same. You say the same. All right. Every cloud has a silver lining. Eh... No hay mal que por bien no venga. Excellent. You say, right. Where there's fire, there's, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. Donde hubo fuego, cenizas quedan. Oh, it's not No, it's not organized. Yeah. yeah, you know, this is Eso está muy bien. This is part of Jaime Luca. Okay, dime con quien andas y de iré quien eres. So, yeah, con el río suena piedra. Right. Anyway, so this is one activity. Translating those is not that easy, but it's challenging. And 
okay, this is the way that uh, you can use proverbs also to foster enhance the IC. And I have an activity, one more that is about Panama, Ecuador, eh, no, Panama, Peru, and, and Panama and Peru, basically. This is hidden, hidden words. Look what we're going to do. Hidden words are sentences. Oh no, this activity is made out of sentences that they, they don't have grammar mistakes. I mean, not that the students are going to find the mistake. No, the sentence says, for sure, that will be a real help. Unfortunately, we made errors in each one. Each sentence has a hidden word. But in this case, the category is animals. What is the hidden animal in number one? Bear. Hey, who got it? There me, is always, me, of course, yeah, there the is Peruvian the, guy. The there Peruvian is always guy. a student in class. Okay, <laughs> that's all I say. Why he knew it? <laughs> I said, no, because, don't because spoil while, my activity. <laughs> because me, <laughs> meanwhile, you were explaining, I was looking for the bear. Uh, okay, but, uh, okay, remember, my reaction should be wonderful, Jaime. My reaction shouldn't be. My goodness, why no? <laughs> yes, yes, Mauricio, yes. I couldn't, I couldn't hear. <laughs> All right, now here we have the answer, right? Bear, deer, goat, koala, armadillo, and walrus. When I was in, okay, here we have extra activities. If we're working with this, I can say, teacher, guess deer. No, okay, wait. Explaining deer in English, sometimes it's not that easy. No, it's not that easy, you know? So I can do it by using pictures. It could be easier. Now, when I, I happen to be working in, in, in Panama before the pandemics, and when I was in the transportation terminal, I was look, doing this. I was looking for the name of the cities in Panama to do this activity. And I say, Oku, Nata. So what I did was to create the sentence. For example, number one, my cousin Mario laughed during the whole movie. I'm not that for you is gonna be challenging because, oh, by the way, when you have these activities, make sure you have the answers on a piece of paper. <laughs> because otherwise, now, if you ask me, Jaime, if you say, Mauricio, be brave. Tell me the six answers now. Jaime, I would say, Jaime, are we finishing the... <laughs> the, the <laughs> three more minutes, Mauricio. Three more American British minutes. All right. So I say, uh, do you want ice cream or tiramisu cake? The cities, the cities, that we found in Panama are Ola, Colón, Morti, Chame, Mata, Oku, without the, the tilde accent. And then I can say, Ola, okay, who have been to Colón? You know, Colón is the place, the, the, the port in Panama, on the, at the Pacific Ocean and so on. But I had one you for, for Peru. If you are from Peru, no excuses. My neighbor Pepe runs every single day from 6 to 7 a.m. Peru. Peru. Hey. Ah, I mean. <laughs> Sorry, my Mauricio. Old, my oldest cousin, Paulina, is kind of slim and tall. I came to Peru last year. But Peru is there, but it's another city. Last year with my family and visited lots. Okay, these are sentences that we can create. They are grammatically correct, but they have a city in Peru. What is happening now? Since I'm not from, from Peru, I need to double check with a friend like Olenka, Glenda. I may say, hey, ma, hi, me. do you have a city that is Ica, Loreto, Pisco, Puno, Mala? You say no or yes. Maybe Olenka says, Mauricio, I don't know the last one. The same in Colombia. You say, Mauricio, do you have a town that is called Fusagasuga? I say, what? Where? I found it in Google. So you can have these activities and also share them with your class colleagues from the place you're working to make sure that they are really cities in. In, in your in that country, right? So this is an activity that is called hidden words. Takes time to create the sentences, but then it's worth it. Why? Because you can use it to promote those beautiful places in your country as well. And finally, uh, let's uh, finish with. Uh, let me. See, where, where am I? The last. Mm, <clears throat> right. Uh, I mean, we have two minutes, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. So here is the, uh, an, ex, an, uh, an, ex, an example exercise that you can do, like to summarize your classes. What is that? This is Mafalda and her mom. And you say, please, you have five minutes, 10 minutes, the time you are allowed. 
and everybody's going to give me uh, a summary of what we did today. Uh, you're gonna tell your mom what you did. So you can practice and students are going to use cartoons, which is really good. Say, oh, you know, hi mom, hi Mafalda, so on. What happened? Oh, you know, we had a class yes, uh, today about this and this. And this is also a way to get feedback from students using cartoons. I mean, they don't have to write a five paragraph essay. No, it's short. And then what we can do, I can say, okay, guys, I'm gonna share with you my story. Hi, mom. Oh, I can, okay, Glenda is gonna be the mom and Michaela is gonna be Mafalda and they can have like a mini role play and I'm gonna listen. Oh my goodness, they learned this. They didn't, this is the way that I get in feedback from students in a different way. So, uh, I wanna tell you, thank you. Thank you so much for being in this Saturday morning. Thank, thank you so uh, much, and... dear Mauricio. Could you please stop sharing your, your... Yes. Well, thank you so much, dear Mauricio. It's been, it's been a wonderful presentation. Your presentation reminded me of Olenka's presentation when she was, and I told her that she was like a hurricane uh, presenting lots of technological tools, but this time, your presentation has made me feel engaged, part of your, of your, I felt like a student learning, curious to know what you were doing, what you were going to do next. So thank you so much for that, for that Mauricio. Let me, let me uh, uh, give uh, the chance to other people to express their gratitude and their point of view. Anybody, please? We have five more minutes. Hey, hey. Please. Thank you. Uh, hello, hello, Anna in Colombia. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we have enjoyed uh, an excellent presentation by Mauricio. Thank you, Mauricio. He Thank let you. us to remember general culture and introduce to, to realia to our classroom and encourage us to eat sweets. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mauricio. Anna from Barranquilla, Thank Colombia. Thank you, Anna. Yes. Carnival so, party. So, so we will be there. <laughs> the most Ana important. Maria. Yes. Somebody else, uh, Carlos Carranza from Ecuador. Thank please. you. Thank you. May I? Yeah. yeah. Thank you uh, much indeed. Minute, Ana Maria. Thank Carlos. you very much indeed. Uh, Mr. Mauricio, it was a really outstanding presentation. I really like the way you use the realia. And I think this is another topic that maybe we can pick up for a master degree because uh, you gave us uh, the sources or information of the new books and that is really helpful. So I really want to express my gratitude and thank you very much for teaching us this. And the way you speak, you speak fast and your presentation was very understandable. So keep on that way. Thank you very Carlos. much. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. And by the way, Maria I'm gonna... in Bolivia. Hello. Anna. Could you hear Hello, me? Maria Elba. Yes. Hi, Maria. Hello, Maria. Hello. Good Gris. morning. Good morning. Hi, Maria. I want to say the same. I really like your, your presentation. It was very interesting. And uh, I, I, I want to tell you that uh, I, I did more or less the same with uh, proverbs and the students look for the proverbs and we talk about it and, and give uh, the meaning, but uh, with simple sentences. And they, I think that they, they, uh, they learn a lot using, as you, as you write all the, all the uh, phrases that we have in South America, I think the same. Okay, congratulations for Thank everybody you. and for you, uh, Tito. Thank you so much, Maria Elba. Finally, Beatriz in Bolivia. Uh, Mauricio, that was amazing. Yes. And I have to tell you that I was really, really um, anxiously waiting to, 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 to be part of your presentation. I thought it was last week and I was like connected and I was like, Jaime, why aren't you here? <laughs> I'm waiting. I say, oh my goodness. She's been, she's been <laughs> waiting for you, Mauricio. 
Four like feet. Seven Great days. job. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you, Beatriz. Yeah. And finally, before Mauricio, you give your your final presentation words, let me give uh, a, a few seconds to our president, the president <laughs> of, of our association in Canada. There, there will be a face-to-face -face, uh, election soon. Raj. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mauricio. I want to start <laughs> where you were, I want to end where you were beginning, cultural knowledge, cultural awareness, cultural competence. You certainly took us on a trip to do all those three things. And in a very fun way, I think that was so amazing. And such fast paced, had to keep my focusing on listening to you. Amazing, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Okay, now Mauricio, before you say your final presentation words, let me just remind everyone that in our next presentation will be the 21st of November. Unfortunately, uh, Al uh, Alistair uh, from, uh, the U from England, he was going to present uh, next week, but he had a problem, so he won't be able. So our next presentation will be 21st of November. Okay, now Mauricio, back to you. <clears throat> okay, Jaime, I wanna tell you again, thank you. And I want to make sure that uh, you are going to get all these resources. So I'm going please, to please. send them and share it in PowerPoint, not in PDF. Why PowerPoint? Because I want you to give it a try. And Change for me, it. Uh, and edit. For me, the, yeah. the, the realia that you were showing us, all the books <laughs> and all the games. Oh my only goodness. for me. What That's I'm going me. to do with this food? I don't like all of this. <laughs> I will go to Colombia to pick it up. I will go no, I, to I love Colombia. It. No, I have to say, I love Arequipe, but no. Anyways, <laughs> no, I want to make sure that uh, you, yeah, this is one thing that, uh, uh, something that uh, we have learned from this situation from the pandemic that uh, we are not supposed to be selfish with what we do. I'm not going to say, oh, I spent five days doing this cartoon. Why your link is going to do it? And you said in, in one minute, no, no. Yes, we why, why? <laughs> no, no. We, need, we need to share things. That is why I'm sharing with you all these links and PowerPoints in PowerPoint, not in PDF, because I want you to give it a try. The ones you want to use it and the ones that are, you're not going to use it, maybe next year are gonna be uh, helpful for your future classes. Hi, thank you again. And remember, you are more than welcome to drop by Medellin. When you have the chance, you are more than welcome to visit us I in will in Colombia Mauricio. in general. I will, I will, uh, because I have so many good, good friends like you in Colombia, in Canada, Ecuador, Colombia, everywhere. Thank God. And as you said, we had so many things to, to, to share and we shouldn't be selfish and we should be just like you, open, transparent and everything else. Um, maybe somebody else wants to say something else before we say goodbye. We have one more minute. Anybody who wants to express his or her gratitude to our good friend, Mauricio. Before, before, before the raffle. <laughs> yes, before the raffle. <laughs> Gabriela in the USA, now she's a North American citizen. I like a lot of your presentation. Hello, Mauricio. Nice to see you again. It's just uh, your, the activities that you show us today, you guided, uh, are very uh, useful for kids, adolescents, and adults. So it can be applied for all different levels, that which is more engaging for me, meaningful for my classes. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriela. This Marco, Mexico. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you for this excellent presentation, very interesting. <clears throat> and I think this shows that uh, there are no limits for creativity. You look at a piece of material and you say, oh, what is it? But when you start thinking, you find that. <clears throat> thank you very much. Thank you, dear Marco. Thank you, Marco, Mauricio, Raj. Um, Tito, Olenka, Micaela, Roxana, Carlos, Ana María, María Elba, Glenda, José Lobo in Colombia, Neil, Beatriz, Gabriela, Tania, Karina, and all the people who were listening and watching you, Mauricio, thank you so much uh, for your time. And now for me, it's time to cook and do the washing up. I don't know <laughs> about you, Tito. I don't know. Ah, okay, the same. <laughs> Very good. So see you, see you soon uh, in the next um, international meeting. 
Have a good Thank you, Jaime. Thank bye. you, Beatriz. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you, Mauricio. Bye. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 B